Hello and welcome to today's live video. So today I want to talk to you about antioxidants and that's just scratching the tip of the iceberg. We're going to be talk, talking about all of the different kinds of chemicals in our foods that can help us feel better, have more energy, deal with stress in all different forms from emotional stress, like work stress, things like that, having kids, you know, being alive, just as stressful as that is, but also physiological stress and chemical stress, you know, injuries. So you scratch yourself, cut yourself. So you get bitten by a mosquito, um, chemical things like mold and mycotoxin exposure, metals, anything that's causing stress in your body, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual. We're going to talk about the food based benefits of how we can support these, these systems. So I titled today, eat the rainbow. And that's for a very good reason. You've probably heard this before. This is one of the things that the mainstream kind of got right which is a, a rare thing to say, but they did, they kind of got this right. So eat the rainbow basically just means eat different colored things. It's pretty, pretty simple. So when we're, what we're looking for here is variety and diversity. And this is for, for two primary reasons. The first being just the natural antioxidant effects of these substances, but also their impact on the microbiome. We're going to touch on the second one in just a second, but I want to start here looking at the antioxidant effects. So, Different foods have different compounds in them. And the way you know this is they taste different and they smell different and they have different colors. And that's the best way to understand where we're going today and what we're going to be talking about. So we want to, we want to get as much diversity and variety as possible. Now, I know there's going to be a handful of people, probably a big handful, maybe a, maybe a double handful of people that say, but I have food sensitivities, I have intolerances, I can't eat the rainbow, I can't eat everything. Maybe you're even on a carnivore diet. Wherever you're at, there's, there's something that you can take from what we're gonna talk about today. Even if you have a restrictive diet, just don't eat foods that you know don't, you don't do well with. But you can still, there's still things that you can do where, wherever you're at. And if you're fortunate enough to be able to eat literally whatever you want, like myself, this is gonna be even more powerful and even more effective for you. So first of all, just think about foods that look different, taste different, smell different. You want to be getting as many of those as possible. Think about, for example, onions and garlic. They have similar, but still very distinctly different smells, tastes, textures, aromas, colors. They, this is all because of the different compounds that are in these plants. And then you could think about broccoli, for example, it has a very specific taste. Broccoli is really high in sulforaphane, which is a really powerful antioxidant. In onions and garlic, you've got things like allicin, and you've got, so think about the, the onions, like the fact that it makes you cry, you know, that's, a, that's one of these plant chemicals. These all have different impacts in your body, and they impact, they, they, they have different affinities for different um, reactive oxygen species. So think about it like this. If you've got a, if you've got like a construction site, you've got a, a new house that's being built, you need a lot of different tools, you know? You need a hammer, you need a screwdriver, you need a spanner, you need something to pour the concrete, you need something to dig up rocks, spades. You need loads of different tools. And you could probably do all of these jobs with your hands. I mean, you, you, you could, and maybe it wouldn't work very well, but you, you could probably get these done. Or with basic things, like you can hammer, some, you can hammer in a nail with a rock. You can hammer in a nail with a, with a spade. You know, you can do it, but it doesn't mean it's the best way to do it. When we're getting diversity, you're getting more tools and your body has different and uh, different reactive oxygen species, different um, harmful pr like pro-oxidant, they're inflammatory things, different substances in your body that are going to impact it in different ways. And this is also true for like mental and emotional stress as well, but it's a bit harder to conceptualize. So I'm just going to focus on the physical just, just for now. So these different, these different um, substances have different affinities for different reactive oxygen species. So an antioxidant that you find in, say, um, Brussels sprouts might be more effective for mercury than for lead. And then your body will preferentially use it for neutralizing mercury. And then say there's a, a compound, and this doesn't even have to just be plants. This could be, let's take, so that red pigment that you get in like salmon and prawns, that is, that is also a, that's an antioxidant compound. The name escapes me. Oh, it's come back. Astaxanthin. This is a, a compound that is bioaccumulated in these in these in these animals, and it works as a specific antioxidant that has affinities for 
for certain types of toxins. So what we want to do in, in, in this, what we're trying to do here is even if you keep your like total axe antioxidant capacity at the same amount, so you've still got like 100 units of antioxidants, if they're all one thing, so say you've got 100 spanners, that's, that's great and it's useful, but imagine if you had 10 spanners, 10 hammers, 10 screwdrivers, you'd get so many, and then and just all the way up to 100, you'd get so many more different jobs done in such a more efficient and effective way. And that's what you get from having different plant chemicals and different uh, bioflavonoids and biochemicals and stuff that you get from a, a varied diet. So the way you, the best way you can do this is just think diversity. So the more different colors, it's primarily colors, smells, and flavors that you have in your diet, the better. Think about that, that rich creaminess of, of cacao. That's got so many different compounds and chemicals in it. And then think about the aroma of coffee. You know, it's very unique. You can smell coffee and you're like, mmm, that's coffee. That's a certain combination of plant chemicals and compounds that have very powerful effects in your body. And your body is smart, you know. Your, your natural appetite is determined by what of these plant chemical and compounds your body actually needs. So if you're like, oh, I'm craving chocolate, there's a good likelihood that your body needs something from that. If you're craving this or that, like, I know it sounds crazy, but Joanna just now was like, I'm craving broccoli. You know, I don't know, I, I don't know anyone on earth who craves broccoli. She did, like her body needs something from that. Going through these cycles of cravings of just desiring to eat different, different things is because your body needs something from it at that time. And if we can buy into that, it can be really helpful. So if you do get a specific craving for a certain thing, go for it. But in general, the more variety that you have, the better. So having a lot of different things gives you a lot of different variety, which will means you'll have lots of different tools that are going to be more effective for different types of toxins on a physical level, but also for a mental and emotional level too. But again, complicated. I'm not going to talk about it today. So you even get, so you've got the variety in the things. So you've got the different colors, the different flavors and the different aromas. You can go a step further. You can cook things differently and cook them in different combinations as well. And this provides different things. Like for example, if you take a potato or some rice or anything that has starch in it and you, you cook it and then you eat it, it has a certain nutritional profile with certain prebiotics, certain antibiotics, certain biochemicals, certain flavonoids. If you then let it cool down and then eat it cool, so in the case of um, like potatoes and rice, some of this starch turns into resistant starch, which is an extremely powerful prebiotic substance that wasn't actually present in the original like cooked potato or cooked rice. And all you did was cook it and then let it cool down. So you can see how it's the same thing, but we've, we've, we've provided this variety component in the way that we've prepared it. And you can do this with other things too. For example, another really, really cool one. If you take tomatoes and you cook them with olive oil, a new substance is formed that isn't present in either of these foods in their raw state. But when you cook them together, a new substance is formed and it's a really powerful antioxidant. And you think about how olive oil and tomatoes are the base of many diets that are considered to be very healthy all the way, all the way through the world. So it's really interesting that you see that maybe it's not just the olive oil and maybe it's not just the tomato. Maybe it's when they're combined and new substances are formed. But you can take this and you can apply it in, in a million different ways. The, the trick is cook your food differently. Have it cooked in different states. Even if you can only tolerate five foods, you can try doing it in different forms. Cooked versus boiled versus steamed versus roasted. You get different substances in each. And if you do have a more, uh, ver ver more variety in your diet, try different things. Try going to the supermarket and eat something that you've never eaten before. Try a food that you've, you've never eaten before and see how you do. See how you do on it. And maybe your body will be like, we like that and it will crave more. I always, I always uh, challenge myself and I challenge you, try and find one thing in the supermarket, at the farmer's market, even if it's something that you've eaten before, just a different variety of something and, and eat it and you'll get different antioxidants, different bio, bioflavonoids, different, different plant chemicals that will provide your body with, with different things to help it with different, different reactions. And this is just, as I said, this is like just the top layer. There's actually a deeper layer underneath this that is just profound. And that is the the health of your microbiome is pretty fairly determined by the variety of your microbiome diversity. So what does what does that mean in like layman's terms? Like what does that mean? What does that what does that mean? It means the more different bugs you have in your gut, the healthier your gut is. 
And the best way to get more diversity in your gut is to eat more different things. So they did a study and they took the, the stool from people from, from, I think it was chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia patients. And they basically had a diversity between 100 and 150, almost, uni- almost across the board. It was just every single person had a diversity of about 100 to 150 compared to that of a healthy person who has a variety between 1.5 and 2.5 thousand. So 10 times and even more, 10 to 18 times more than somebody with chronic fatigue or fibromyalgia. So this, is it a correlation? Is it a causation? You can't, you can't really say. But either way you go about it, there's a, there's, a, there's a pattern between microbiome diversity and disease states. And they looked at it specifically in this circumstance. But you see it over and over again with, with um, viral infections, people's immunity states, um, predispositions to things like diabetes and uh, uh, atherosclerosis and heart disease. Or basically, whatever disease you're looking at, you're more likely to get it or it's more likely to be worse. The symptoms are likely to be worse if your microbiome diversity is less. So better microbiome diversity equals better health outcomes across the board, chronic health problems or not. Just having more diversity is better. So the best way that we can do this is to provide different substances. Everybody talks about prebiotics or different fibers that feed different organisms. And that's, that's a big part, you know, and doing this, you get different, you get these different um, substances. But the prebiotics are not the most important part in my experience. It's more about these other bioflavonoids and plant chemicals, the things that smell different, taste different, and have different colors. These are all prebiotic substances, and they all feed different organisms. They all kill different organisms. Like, people know that when you take herbal antimicrobials, like oregano extract, grapefruit seed extract, neem oil, all of these different things, um, like holy basil, like, there's loads of different things that you can take. And they eat, like, allicin in garlic as well. Like, these are all antimicrobial substances that are actually present in these foods in their whole food form. The trick is actually finding the balance where, say you take that garlic and you eat it, yes, it has the allicin, but it also has the inulin and it has other compounds that stimulate the immune response in certain ways. It's about eating these foods where you're providing, trying to get like that balance between all of the substances instead of like taking an allicin supplement to get the antimicrobials and then taking an an inulin supplement to get the, the prebiotics and then taking like some kind of immune stimulating substance. It's like, just eat the food. It's, it's easier and it makes sense. We don't have to break it all apart. Just eat the food in, in a diverse array. And my, my favorite trick here, two, so two tricks for you. One, if you want to just get some like really rapid diversity and you're not really a chef type, you know, can't really be asked to cook. Maybe you're running a health coaching business like myself. Or maybe you like maybe life's busy and you just don't have time to like go to the market and just buy loads of bunch of different stuff and like life's busy right now. What you can do is just kind of make a soup of a bunch of different stuff, concentrate it down as much as you can, freeze it into little ice cubes, and just pop one of those out and just eat it. You can stick it into your stir fry. You can put it in one of your other soups that you're making. You can put it in anything, and you're basically going to increase the diversity of the foods that you're eating in that meal, like astronomically. It's like a a fiber supplement, it's like a polyphenol supplement, it's like an antioxidant supplement, all in one. It's really, really cool. It can really, really help with your diversity, especially if you're busy. Also, doing this is nice. If you have food sensitivities, you can use this as a sort of standardized way to increase your dose very gently, very slowly over time. So you can freeze really small little things in the ice cube tray and then break them in half and then just take one. And then you're providing some of those polyphenols, some of those prebiotics in that, in that array. And then you build the dosage up over time. So this way you can work on improving your microbiome diversity gently according to what you're able to tolerate. My final trick for you, and this one is probably my favorite, is juicing. Juicing just allows you to get a whole bunch of just random stuff and just stick it all in one glass and drink it. You can juice whatever you can find. You can juice leftovers. You can even juice things that you wouldn't normally eat, like the leaves on the outside of the cabbage or the broccoli stem. Like you can juice these things and they have a lot of juice and they've got a lot of powerful substances in and all of that indigestible insoluble fiber that is just really irritating to the gut is just removed and you basically get free juice out of vegetable waste you can also stick nice stuff in there carrots different types of fruits obviously some fruits don't juice well don't try to juice avocados don't try to juice bananas it doesn't really work very nicely 
But even with these things, like if you're eating whole food, different, different, get as much variety as you can. Lots of different colors, lots of different flavors, lots of different textures, lots of different tastes, lots of different cooking preparations, lots and lots and lots of different things. And just go for a little bit here and there, and eventually you'll be eating more diverse diet than you've ever realized. Just go for one extra thing a week. In 52 weeks, you'll have tried 52 new foods, and your microbiome will thank you for it. Your microbiome will change. Your antioxidant status will change. It's one of the best ways you can support like antioxidant status inside your body. So if you've got like liver inflammation going on, if you've got any kind of like chronic infection going on, if you've got this uh, chronic oxidative stress and your body just can't get on top of this, of this stress that it's experiencing, like on a biochemical level, just providing it with some more variety of different types of antioxidants, polyphenols, plant chemicals. And again, even if you're on a carnivore diet, you can, you can, you can mix it up, you know, have some, have some, um, some, like some smoked salmon from Alaska, where you've got that really nice red pigment color, have some mackerel, have some of that. I don't know. There's like a fish that's kind of pinky, have some octopus, have some squid, have some sea bass, go for like, try different things. You even get like, for example, one of the things that makes dairy products yellow are the carotenoids that are in it. And those carotenoids come from the animals eating grass. So those, those plant polyphenol chemicals that are in the grass, they are like fermented by the gut of the, of the cow or the sheep or whatever the dairy is you're eating. And they come through in the dairy and you see them in that color. Same for eggs. If you get chickens that are eating lots of different polyphenols, you'll see those egg yolks. They're like a deep, dark orange or even red. You know, this is, this works universally. W whatever your diet looks like now, just try and increase the variety within whatever restrictions you have as much as possible and enjoy it. You know, your diet is really important that you enjoy it. So as long as you're enjoying it, that's, that's, um, you're half, you're half the way there. So hope this has been really helpful. I'm just going to check if we have any questions. Don't think we do. So we're going to finish up. I'll see you in the next video. Hope it's been really good. Bye.